Good evening, Hello. everyone. Hi. Um, it's nice to be uh, actually doing something other than uh, editing videos tonight. Um, we've been hard at work on the Alaska Folk Fest. We both have Alaska shirts on yes. in honor of the Folk Fest, which starts later tonight. Um, but this we're... one's from one of the best food trucks around, yeah, the Potato in McCarthy, Alaska. Yes. And mine is um, a shirt that I've had since high school, actually. Cool. <laughs> you can tell. It's Still quite, fits. It's quite, yeah, that's a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> Especially after the pandemic. Yeah. Um, anyways, we're really excited to be actually playing some tunes with all of you um, instead of staring at our computer screens. Um, I guess we're still doing that. Still staring at the screen. But... <laughs> we're talking while we're yeah, staring yeah. at the computer screens. Um, so we had a great time last week. If you weren't here last week, um, it's worth checking out the session. Um, some highlights were that Chris ate an instrument that he played. It's true. Um, let's see. We lost Katie and Neil at the end and haven't heard from them since. We think they're trapped in the internet somewhere. Um, what else happened? Uh, they switched instruments. There was all sorts of great stuff that happened um, last week. So you should. Def I, I usually don't tell people to go backwards yeah. in the sessions, but you should definitely check it's it out. It's worth a look. It's 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 worth it. Um, and tonight we have um, a great theme as well. Um, we didn't prepare as much silly stuff because we've been working our tails off with uh, the festival. But um, uh, our guests tonight, Mari Black and Francis Cunningham, did prepare quite a lot of excellent, excellent stuff. For sure. And the theme is. A wild night out at the Cayley, which is which could be interpreted many many different ways, and they did interpret it many different ways. Yes. Each of their sets that they're playing tonight is a little mini theme within the bigger theme, yep. and they'll explain that as we go. So very exciting. Um, okay, maybe we should play a set. Let's start off. Um, okay, so I selected some slip jigs and hop jigs to start off with because we haven't done any of those in a while. Mm -hmm. uh, first one is the butterfly. Classic. Um, second one is Boys of Balsadere, not the real. We're going to play this, the, the hop jig, actually. And then we'll end with Fig for a Kiss at the end. Um, I think two times each, but I'll, I'll call it as we go. E minor to start with. All right. Uh, one, two, three. Thank you. 
piano at the end like that. Very nice. Um, good. Okay. And I hope everybody is playing along at home. I saw that um, um, John Mullen was chatting during the set. So I think that he wasn't playing long. Not cool. Um, and so he gets a, he gets a, a, a D one for demerit. the first. <laughs> one demerit. Um, no, I'm just joking. You can do whatever you want and hope you can um, play along, listen along, drink along, eat along. Lay in bed. It's it's uh it's it's actually very freeing in the pandemic yeah. age. You can you can. You don't have to wear pants. You don't even have to wear pants. That's true. We are wearing pants, just so everybody knows. I feel like that joke is. That's has a been, played out. Been made. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Um, okay, I did um, I did make a Facebook post yesterday because I had to do a radio interview, and I actually for some reason felt like I needed to get dressed up for the radio interview. Did you notice that I yes. put on like the blazer, and I also put on deodorant for the for the Zoom interview, which that was is nice. a really st- <laughs> was nice for yeah. you. <laughs> I'm just getting in my full Alaska mode. That's that's what's happening. Um, <clears throat> okay, anyways, so let's move on to our um, our guest artists for tonight. I mentioned. They are uh, Mari Black and Frances Cunningham. I saw that Frances is in, is in the chat window. I haven't seen Mari yet, but she's probably arriving shortly. Probably. Hopefully because she's on in <laughs> 20 seconds. Um, so I think they're gonna explain their theme and um, we hope you enjoy it and play along. Hi there, Mary Ellis. Welcome to your Thursday night tune playing entertainment. I'm Mari Black, I'm in Boston, Massachusetts. I'm Frances Cunningham in Nashville, Tennessee. The theme of tonight's session is a wild night out at the Cayley. And the reason we came upon this theme was in talking amongst ourselves, we realized that this is the thing we have missed most this past year, being out at the sessions. And not just any session, a rager session. We're talking about the sessions that take place at the festivals, at the fiddle camps, that you, you know, they go all night, you play your fingers off, and then you keep going, nobody's thinking of going to sleep, it clears out the hotel lobby of normal people, and then packs it in with us crazy two nerds, and that energy is just so, so wonderful. So we're going to invoke that here tonight, um, not just with us and our tune choices, but of course with you guys playing along and providing that great session energy. So let's start out with a set of jigs. Now this set is designed to remind us all of that wonderful magical moment that happens at every Rager session. And uh, it's that moment where a set of tunes starts and it is instantly so grooving, so rocking, so magnetic that you have to stop whatever it is you're doing to play along. You stop talking to your buddy in the back corner. You stop shoveling a late dinner into your mouth. You probably even stop worrying about whether or not you actually know the tunes because you just have to figure it out to be able to play and participate in that energy. So you catch my drift, grab your instrument and let's play the Roaring Barmaid in G, the Road to Banff in D, and Stan Chapman's in A in a way that nobody cares anything other than you have to make a joyful sound and uh, participate in this rocker session opening. Ready? Oh, one, two, oh, one. Two, three, ah!
that was a good start. Love those jigs. Yes. Um, we I, actually, we thought about playing Roaring Barmaid ourselves. But. Actually, I was picking out the tunes to put on the set. We always do that, like, you know, three minutes before yeah. we're supposed to go to, to air. And um, I was saying the names, and Chris was like, nope, no. Mari got that. Nope, Mari got that one already. Nope, Mari got that one. She got all my favorite ones, <laughs> which is a good sign, I yes. think. We're on the same, same wavelength. Um, okay, so... Uh, a uh, quick announcement, and I, I should have been announcing this the last three weeks, but I completely forgot. And that is that the Irish Arts Center's next semester begins this coming week. Um, they remain online for now, so there will be a, another eight-week semester of classes um, starting next week. My classes are on Tuesdays. I teach three levels of fiddle. And James Cleveland, who you might know from the session, teaches the other three levels of fiddle, and his classes are on Monday. Um, in addition to... Um, our fiddle classes, there's also tons and tons of other classes. In, in fact, they've actually added a bunch of interesting things um, like theater arts, liter literary arts, um, dance stuff, language stuff. It's, it's rather extensive. Um, I think they might have more stuff now than they did prior to the yeah. pandemic. Yeah. Um, so I highly recommend it. It's all on Zoom, uh, so you can join from anywhere. And if you um, can't make all the classes or if you are Zoomed out, as I am, and many people are, um, don't worry too much about that because the classes are recorded, so you can get the recordings afterwards if you have to miss a class or you cannot stand looking at your computer anymore. Um, the re recordings are available uh, after the fact. So you can sign up at irishartscenter.org, I think. I'll, I'll put that into the, into the chat. And I hope to see some of you fiddle students um, next week on Tuesday. Um, yeah. Oh, you showed the thing while I was... I showed yeah, it. Yeah. Great. We're done. Excellent. Okay. So, uh, the cool thing about this evening, which I didn't plan, it just somehow happened, was a bunch of um, community submitted videos came in over the last few weeks. And we didn't necessarily ask for them, although we're always... We, we've mentioned that they're always welcome. Um, but uh, they, they just kind of came in all together, and they're all going on this... Um, session and that actually works well for the theme of Wild Night out at the Cayley because they all kind of feature um, their local bars, um, local community, uh, local Zoom session, local Zoom session, like all all sorts of these kind of community oriented music things that we've been talking about this whole year. Um, they they are all featured in these videos and we're gonna start off with the first one. There, how many are there? Four. Four. Yeah, there's four of them. Or five. There's a lot. Four. Four. Okay. I think there's four. So the one that we're going to start with, um, and I have to look at my sheets to make sure I get all this information right. This is a really cool story. So um, back around Christmas, I think it was, right? Dan Snyder got in touch with us and asked if we, um, or if our, our uh, the Tunes Play artists do custom uh, commissioned songs and tunes, if, they, if, if the artist can write a tune. And we have had some of these requests already, and so we said, yeah, we can totally hook that up. Um, so he commissioned Colin Farrell to write two tunes for his local session at the Sligo Pub in uh, Media, Pennsylvania. So that was the first layer of everything, yep. which was cool enough by itself. Like the video that came out of it was just awesome. It was Colin playing with Dave Curley. It was yep. great. So we sent that over to him. He sent the video to his session mates, and they all learned both tunes. And then they made a video of themselves playing the tunes and sent it back to us. And that's what we're going to show you right now. So it's multi-layered and awesome, and it's giving me the chills just to think about like all the parts coming together. Um, did I miss anything? I think that's no. Okay, and I don't either. actually have a list of all the people in the in the video, but it's it's the session players from um, from the Sligo Pub in Media, Pennsylvania. Enjoy.
I love that. Loved it. Um, I was just saying to Chris that my favorite, I mean, I, I love the whole thing, but one of my favorite parts of that is some of the people in the Zoom boxes are just watching or listening. Yeah. Which is what a session is. It's an integral part. Yes, of yes. Of the session experience. Yes, and at first I was like, why are they not playing? And then I thought, how can you have a session without having people also listen to it? That's such an integral part of the whole thing. So it just gives me chills. So, so cool. I so, probably sat watching at sessions for the better part of two years before I was brave enough to play at them. Yes, and it's important to do that before you start playing yeah. to, to, to get um, the tunes in your head and all the session etiquette and all yeah. that. Um, Okay, so thank you to Dan Snyder first for, for ordering the commissioned tune, and then thanks to everybody at the Sligo Pub for putting that video together and for sending it to us. Yes. It's such a cool... It's so cool. It, it's so cool. They did great work with that. Yes. Who made the video, by the way? Do you know? Was it Dan? No. I don't think so. Oh, I think it was Ken? Is that the guy? It might be sure. the guy, yeah. I'm Sorry, sure. we should know this information. But it was not us who put it together, but it was amazing, and yeah. I love the videos going across yeah, the screen. Yeah. Um, excuse me. Um, Okay, and on the subject of, of custom tunes, there is a custom tune project uh, product now on the store because we had so uh, not so many, but we had a few orders. Yeah. Um, it is it is not cheap because it is not cheap to hire musicians to write you a custom tune. But we also um, can't promise it'll be Colin Farrell. No, although he is although very he loves to do very it. fast at He's writing very tunes. Fast. Yeah. He wrote one tune a year, a uh, one, tune a, one day tune a day last year, yeah. you might recall. Um, anyways, it's it, it's a very it's probably the most unique thing we have yes. on the store. I'd say. Yeah. Okay, moving along, uh, we mentioned that we're wearing our Alaska shirts because the Alaska Folk Festival starts, um, it actually started earlier this week, but our yes. part of it, we're bringing the main stage concerts online and it starts tonight. Now, mm -hmm. um, it is in Alaska time, so it's really quite late, the start time here. It's 10.30 p.m. Eastern time, 6.30 p.m. Alaska time, and the concerts are really long because we had over 150 submissions uh, for the concerts. So um, you, it, if you want to stay up till 2 a.m. with us, we will be there watching the concerts, um, but they'll also be available afterwards, of course, just like a regular Tune Supply broadcast. They are not on this channel, though. They are on the Alaska Folk Fest channel. Um, the easiest way to find it is to put in bit.ly slash akfolkfest because they did not get their, um, their fancy YouTube name just yet. So that's the easiest way to find it. And um, we wanted to show you the trailer because we got to use some cool drone footed footage from a local photographer and it's quite cool. So here you go. Imagine better music to suit uh, the folk festival. That's no, what, that's what it sounds like. It that is exactly what for it sounds a whole like. Week. Yes, there's there's also Irish um, tunes as well, but in the last couple of years, it's gotten more towards old time yeah. music. So that was perfect for. Um, we we just watch that over over and over, and we yell woohoo at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> this is great. Um, you can also see Juno in the in that footage. There, it's Juno is precariously placed. Um, at yeah, the it really bottom. doesn't look like there should be a town there. No, especially yeah. when you're flying in. Actually, it looks like you're going to crash into the mountain mm -hmm. when you're flying in. Yeah. Um, and they so have all kinds of avalanche trouble, especially yes, this year. Especially this year, and, and yeah. apparently it's snowing right now. Um, anyway, so Juno is a is a small little town at the base of these mountains, right in front of the ocean. Yes. It's gorgeous. Okay, there you go. So you can, if you need more tunes tonight, that starts at 10.30 um, p.m., Eastern time over on the AK Folk Fest channel. We can throw the link in the. Oh, yeah, I will. As well. I'll do that. Yeah. Okay, so let's go to some tunes. It's been a while. All right. um, second set from Mari and Francis. All right, so think about your favorite rager session you've ever been to. You got it? 
I guarantee that one of the things that's going through your head right now is not just the great music and the great energy, but the big, nay, huge personalities of the individuals that were there with you. Because come on guys, let's face it, us two nerds, what a bunch of eccentric weirdos we all are, right? And all of us in our own ways, a, a wonderful diversity of eccentric weirdos that populate any self-respecting rager session. So we have to do a big personality set, don't we? Uh, we're gonna do reels. I personally love a good swagger reel, right? Like a little bit slower and like super groovy, just huge ego reels. So we're gonna do those. And uh, maybe you'll hear some of the big personalities in your favorite Rager session uh, that, uh, that you hear. Maybe you'll hear yourself. I know I'm in at least one of these. Uh, we're gonna do the Tempest in D minor. We'll do the Man of the House in E minor and Frank's reel in A. I don't know if Frank himself is a big personality, but certainly it's one of the biggest personality tunes that I know of. All right, you ready to get your swagger on?
<laughs> Excellent. Um, Mari has arrived at the session. Hi, Mari. Um, now there's two Maris Great. Uh, at the session. Great. <laughs> um, she is in the chat. I We're never really sure how many people who watch the session are um, are watching without the chat. Actually, that's something I've always wondered. I think there are some. Yes. I well, if you put it on your TV, then you wouldn't that's have That's true. You wouldn't have any chat. Yeah. Um, but uh, if you if you'd like to chat to anybody, there's always a pretty exciting chat going on in the yes. chat window. If you're if you haven't um, if you haven't done that before, <laughs> it's actually probably my favorite part of the session is being in the chat window. My favorite part of online concerts at yeah. all. Is I don't know how we're going to go to a people. concert yeah. um, without a chat window in the future. Don't know. Might be yeah. <laughs> might be tricky. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Oh, Mari has a concert that's coming up, and um, I wanted to mention it. It is on. April 10th, what's today? 8th. April so it's 8th. on Saturday it's on, yeah. night um, at 7 p.m. Eastern. Although I, it's a really interesting way that they're doing it. I think it actually gets broadcast three separate times at 7 p.m. Cool. Pacific, Eastern, and GMT, I think. Cool. Which is a great Smart. idea, actually. Yeah. We should do that. Yeah, um, <laughs> we should. Uh, it does cost $15, which is well worth it um, to support musicians and the arts and all that sort of good stuff. And um, I will put the link right now into the chat. Um, Chris has the poster up there. Features Troy McGillivray. Yes. Oh, I don't have it in front of me, so I have to get it. I'll get it when we go to the next set. Yes, it features Troy um, and Mari, two of my favorite, favorite people and fiddle players. Um, and there's also a trailer for it on Facebook, which is hilarious. Oh, we should have shared it. Oh, we should. Oh, we can well. still. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll grab all that and put it in the chat. Um, but it should be very good. So I, we encourage you to stop by. That's on Saturday night. And you can go to that and go to the Alaska Folk Festival, I'm just saying. That's true. Because it starts so you late. You just like go one into the other. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So many <laughs> tunes these days. It's yeah. great. Um, so we have our next uh, uh, cool community submission, uh, video submission. This one was actually supposed to go on the session that was on the 18th of March for St. Patrick's Day. And we were so overwhelmed uh, we, with, with stuff, various types of stuff, that we uh, weren't able to get it on that session, which I felt really bad about because they were waiting and ready to yes. go. Um, and then I pushed it back and pushed it back, and it's totally my fault, but it's, it's finally going on tonight. And it is a uh, performance by Caitlin Golding's Dance School. Caitlin Golding is an incredible Irish dancer who has danced with all the famous groups that you might think of. And she and I met, I think, when um, we were playing with Cherish the Ladies and she was, she was dancing. Um, and she's a, a good friend of mine, and I played at her wedding. I think that was she's last year. She's been up year. to Alaska? She's been up to, yes, she came yeah. to Alaska for one of the festivals. Yep. And um, was great working with, the, with, with all the folks up there. Um, and she, you know what, where she really got a lot of points with me? She was up for all these crazy adventures. Yeah. All of them. And I come up with some crazy ones, as you know. Yeah, that's true. Um, so, yeah. Anyways, we're really glad to have them on tonight. Um, this is, Caitlin's actually not in the videos. This is her dance students. The first thing they're going to do is um, the St. Patrick's Day set dance. And the second one is a set of reels. So, enjoy. <laughs>
Excellent. Um, I, I don't know if they're watching. I hope they are. Or, yeah. or Caitlin, I'm not sure. But um, thank you t for for being on the on the session. And I'm really, really sorry that it took us a couple extra weeks, three extra weeks, I yes. guess, to 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 put you guys on. Um, but that was excellent. I love their n matching outfits. And the matching masks. The masks. So cool. Yes. Really, really great. Yeah. I actually don't. I was just trying to think where her dance studio is actually located. Do you know? Uh, is it in Jersey? I don't know. I don't know either. I should probably figure that out. Probably. In case anybody wants to take dance lessons. Yes. Um, okay, and Caitlin is one of the dancers on the Tune Supply roster, and you can read more about her um, over there. I'll put her link in. She's an extremely accomplished um, dancer and uh, various other things that she does as well. Yeah. Um, uh, great to have her. Uh, okay, so we have the Toast Report. Um, which just today consists of a couple of pictures. Toast is our cat who has been making appearances here and there. Um, recently, Toast was helping Chris to um, do the editing on all the videos. Uh, this is where he would sit. Um, you can see Chris's um, keyboard there. And uh, here's another picture of him uh, resting his head on the couch while helping Chris to edit the videos. Okay. And, oh, here he is. Oh, my gosh. Got him. Oh, he's half asleep, I think. Oh my goodness. You can see that Toast um, has toe caps on his, his toes so that he doesn't scratch um, Chris or any furniture or, any or furniture me. Or people. <laughs> um, and he's doing quite well. As you can see, he has gotten fatter um, and softer and more fluffy in the time we've gotten him. So we think things are going okay. with Definitely the, fatter. With the Lord. I can confirm. The Lord Toast. This is Lord Toast. <laughs> I can't believe he's just sitting there. Oh my goodness. Okay. Great. So what's Great. next? Okay, next. Um, well, I think we should have some more tunes. Sounds good. Okay, here we go. I'm Francis in Nashville, and this is the Stumbling Home Set after a long night of playing tunes. The first one's called The Fairy Jig, and the second one is called Another Jig Will Do. They're both slip jigs, and The Fairy Jig was learned from the fairies themselves by Mickey Doherty, so that tells you what kind of night it's been. One, two, three, one, two.
Gorgeous. I love, love the bazooki. Yeah. Um, uh, somebody asked in the in the chat if uh, Frances teaches, and I believe that she said yes, she does teach. So if anybody is interested in lessons, you can get at her. Get a, get a hold of her. Um, I guess the way that you would do that is by sending us an email, um, because uh, yeah, that's probably the best way. Touch. Yeah, we can put you in touch. Uh, our email address, you guys all know it by now. It's tunes at tune.supply, no.com on that. Um, I don't know who chose that really difficult email address. It was me. I should have done hello at tune.supply or yeah. something like that. Well, too late now. We're, we're a year in. Uh, okay, so um, this is probably my favorite thing on the concert of favorite thing or the session of favorite things tonight. If I had to pick, what do you think? I don't know. What's next? Oh well, I guess we have the poem first, but yeah. after that. Okay. Okay. Sorry, you were like, "What That's are you talking about?" Poem. Okay. Okay. Well, we have the, a good poem, but... the poem is always my favorite thing. Yeah. Um, but after that, we have another community submission, which is going to be great. Um, yes, I guess we should show the poem first. I got too excited. I, yeah. ju I jumped right to the right to the exciting thing. Okay. Um, let's go have the poem from Mimi first, and then we'll talk about what happens after that. Hi, Mario's friends. Uh, today, I thought we'd go through the poem archives and cobble together a patchwork of some verse from um, poems of years gone by. So bad, so bad. So here it goes. This is, it, it, they're all just put together from little verses and little bits of poems. 30 days has September, April, June, and November. All the rest have 31, except this January, which had 89. Roses are red, violets are blue. Now's a good time to go to the loo. Harris is funny, and TJ is funny. Please help us to pay and chip in some money. Here at Mario's, each week we create an atmosphere to liberate. I'll play slow, slow you play fast, and that way no one is harassed. It's a chill vibe that we advocate. Told you they were bad. And to dear Chris and to Caitlin to close out this ode, you are with us even when you are out on the road. We love you so much. Um, so chip in if you have some dough and can spare it. Um, buy stuff from Mary's. She needs our help and she helps others in turn, which is astonishing. And um, hope you're all doing fine staying safe, keeping safe, and uh, Dainu. Bye. <laughs> well done. I think Amos's favorite part of the week is when yes. he and Mimi record the poem. <laughs> I think so, too. Because he just gets unlimited treats. Yes. And he gets to wear a hat. Yeah. Also, that was a new hat. Yeah, that was That's a mask, right? I think so. Is it? Uh, it works really well as a hat. I like the plaid on it. Yeah. That was great. Um, if you're new to the session, uh, it is true that uh, Mimi writes a poem specifically for each session, and she not only has done that for all 67 uh, virtual sessions, but for the previous five years of sessions before that, that we were in person. Yep. I, I can't remember when exactly the poem writing started, but it was near the beginning. Um, so I always tell her that she should um, put them together in a book. I would yes. buy that book. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Hopefully there's a record <clears throat> of all of them. She, I believe she They're has them. I, be I believe so, yeah. Um, okay, yes, so please, um, I for I've forgotten this whole time to mention the contribution link, uh, which is which is bad because we, we do actually pay the leaders from the contributions. So um, it's right here above Chris's head. Oh, here. Yep. Um, you cannot click on that link, unfortunately, but you can click on the link that is in the description of this video. So just click show more, I think, down here think somewhere. So. And um, I will throw been, it in the chat. Too, yes, I've been putting chat. it in the chat as well. Um, uh, we appreciate your help with that so that we Helps can keep, keep us going. Yes, keep this, this show in the living room. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and of course, uh, Mary, o, Mary O's is still open. Um, she must be open actually yeah. for dining now. I, I would assume so, yeah. Yeah, we should go. Well, we, we have some of her pots, so yeah, we should bring true. them back to her. <laughs> Um, Javier is watching from Chile. Hi, Javier. Whoa, cool. Very cool. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, Javier, are you a musician? We would like to let know. Us know. Yeah, let us know. Um, okay, so back to my, my favorite thing on the session tonight. And this is not tunes. This is a song. It's a song that um, has recently gained, gained some internet fame. You might have heard <laughs> The Weller Man. 
Um, it is a song that will get stuck in your head after the session. You will not be able to get it out of your head for three days or more. Um, and uh, Dirk Muse and Scott Sherman put this together. And I believe that they, they have created a band maybe based on this happening. I'm not sure if, it, if the band existed before or after, but the band is called Passing Port. Um, and this video was sent in to us and we're really, really excited. So sing along. You, of course, know the Wellerman by now. I'm yep. sure if you've been on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or TikTok. Definitely if you're on TikTok. Definitely yeah. if you're on TikTok. Okay, here we go. There once was a ship that put to sea, and the name of that ship was, was the Billy, Billy of tea. tea. The winds blew hard about dip down, blow my Billy boys blow. <laughs> Two weeks from shore, when down on her a right whale bore. The captain called all hands and swore he'd take that whale in tow. Huh! Soon may the weatherman come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tonguing is done, we'll take our leave and go.
Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reading all the credits as they go by here. This is amazing. I like that five people are credited as pirates. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Dirk, thanks for putting that yes. together and sending it in and letting us show it. Um, that was super fun. I was just smiling and laughing yeah. through the whole thing. It's got to um, be the most extensive version of the Wellerman that's ever been it's, put The together. harmonies are amazing. And somebody said in the comments that, um, that there are players from the, Den the Denver Symphony mm -hmm. involved. Um, very, very cool. It's, that's really, really excellent. Um, uh, I had something to say and I forgot. <laughs> I got yeah. so excited about the Wellerman. Um, oh, Mari said that there's a GameStop Twitter... Or GameStop parody version. Oh, yeah. I, I haven't seen that. We haven't seen that, Mari, so send it to us because uh, <laughs> we're all about the, weather, the Wellerman and about parody versions. And about GameStop. And about GameStop, too. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, okay, so we've got a, a few community pictures on the theme tonight. Uh, not too many. Um, uh, this is, of course, from Angela Botzer, who has only missed one uh, picture yes. su submitting opportunity. Um, these are her dance shoes and some violin resin. Does look like that was a wild night at the Cayley. It does look like. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, I don't know who this is from. This just says Mario's. This is from my personal archives. I don't know who took the picture, but this is the real Mario's. Um, why? It's always a wild night out at the Cayley at Mario's. Yeah. This looks like a birthday, though. I'm not sure whose birthday it was. This is an old picture um, from my uh, archives um, from O'Neill's session, which was my first session that I went to in New York, and my, my I'd say my beloved session. It's, yes. I, I'm sad that it doesn't exist anymore, but these are some of my best friends. You'll probably recognize some of the folks there. Mm -hmm. It's always a wild night there. And Bob Bingaman sent this in. Yes. A um, bunch of familiar faces at the Swannanoa gathering. Yes. Um, we've got Eamon and who's that guitar? Who's the next? Oh, John Doyle, Colin Farrell. Um, can't see who's in the middle there, but I'm guessing probably Kevin. Kevin. <laughs> yeah. And Killian. Killian and um, uh, Kieran O'Hare. Yeah. A who's who? Cool. All right. Um, okay. And then uh, I have some, oh, there's some videos, I think. You have um, Oh yeah. your CD. Yes. Here. Okay. So I wanted to show you all this because um, there is a CD that I put, a, put together in 2011, 10 years ago now. Um, it's live recordings from three Manhattan pubs. And um, I haven't really done much uh, with it. It's just kind of been on the internet. You can get it, you know, this whole time. But in the time of pandemic, it has become... Um, more interesting to me, the CD, because you can hear the glasses clinking and the people chatting in the background, yeah. not listening to the music at all. Right. And um, it, it's, it's the sounds of a pub. And it just, when I listen to it, it gives me chills because it reminds me of what we're supposed to be doing. It's playing out in the pubs. Um, it's called Manhattan Island Sessions. This is actually a little poster from a long time ago. Um, and it is, it's, it's available if you need for your mental health, the sounds of a pub with some tunes in it, which I feel like yes. we all might need at this point. Uh, so I just wanted to mention that on the theme of A Wild Night at the Cayley. It sounds like A Wild Night. It does. Um, and the last track um, almost goes off the rails, actually, which is common by the end of the night, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, there we go. Um, two videos were sent in, so we will show those real quick. These are Wild Nights Out. Who's first? <laughs> Wild Night Out of Mario's for Mick Maloney's birthday. Mick Maloney's birthday, and there was a banjo cake. I, yes. I remember that, actually. That. Um, so that's great. Oh, man, it's good to see all those folks. There's Dan Neely there. That was Dan Snyder that sent that in. Yeah. Um, and the next one was from Peter Kaysen. Oh, yeah. And I'm not sure what this is, so you might have to explain. This is um, the... Uh, do you have it in the... Oh, I'm forgetting the name. A Valley of the Moon. Valley oh, yeah. of the Moon okay. um, Fiddle Camp out in California. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that looks like Missed a lot of sound. fun. Yeah. <laughs> that looks like a lot of fun. And they're so close together. How are they standing so close together? Um, I've never been to the Valley of the Moon uh, camp, but um, I believe that Alistair 
uh, Fraser started it, I think. No. And Natalie Haas. Those are the two people that I associate with that camp. Someday we'll get to go. Um, okay, that was all the community stuff for tonight. But we have lots more tunes. Um, let's let's go hear some more from um, Mari and Francis. All right, my fellow sessioneers, let's talk about and play about a very specific moment that is common to all great rager sessions. Now, it's a small moment, I'll admit, often it only happens once, but it's significant. And uh, in fact, some of us find it so disturbing that when we think about our favorite rager sessions, we block it out altogether. But we do have to face it, 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 is, it is there. And it's, it's that moment where it's late at night and you look around at all your friends and you listen to the beautiful music and you think, should I be going to bed? Should I go get just a couple hours of sleep so I could be semi-functional tomorrow? Because of course the festivities continue. Should, should I do this responsible adult thing? And when this occurs to uh, any of us, we, we do this thing, right? Where we say, okay, I'm gonna play one more set. And all while you're playing that set, you're thinking, is this really the last set? <laughs> so we're gonna do that last set right now. Of course, it's not the last set, but we're gonna, we're gonna think about it as the last set. This is the contemplating your life choices set, all right? So, um, and we're, we're gonna get a little funky with it because if it's late enough that we're considering nap time, it's also late enough that, that people are getting a little weird and mischievous with how they play the tune. So it's, it's all fitting. It will bring you right back to this, uh, this moment that you've experienced many times and will experience again. We're gonna start out with the Slocket Light, which usually is played as a beautiful slow air, but now we're gonna play as kind of a groovy march to show that like contemplation, that thinking about um, what are you going to do? <laughs> and uh, it's fitting because, of course, the slocket light, slocket means to put out. Should I put out the light and, and go to bed and, and be responsible? Um, but then we'll go into the rights of man. And of course, we all know the rights of man is short for the rights of all mankind to continue to jam throughout the night into the sunrise. Consequences whatever i i am superhuman i will not miss out on any of these tunes i i i couldn't possibly think of being anywhere but here we're gonna play it just like that and then of course we'll end up um at, at the inevitable place that you that you end up when you're contemplating these these two uh, diametrically opposed courses of action and that is the reconciliation. Now, we won't say here out loud what the reconciliation of, um, of these two warring, uh, warring desires is, because I think deep down we all know what the decision is, what the decision has to be, in fact. Um, so we, we won't admit it out loud, but um, we will live with the consequences, whatever they may be. Oh.
that mean that right now, um, following their story, it's it's like 5 a.m. now? I think so. And we have to decide whether to stay for one more set. Well, generally, we do stay yeah. for another set. Um, the, that uh, Mari's story reminded me, actually, at the Alaska Folk Fest, in, when it happens in real life, the, the, um, the move is usually you go to the concerts, then you go out to um, one of the bars and you dance to some honky-tonk music for a little bit. Yep. And then you go to the uh, Alaskan um, hotel up into the up into the top floors, and you play sessions yep. until about five or six, and then you go to breakfast. Yep. And then you sleep for a few hours, and you do it again. It's great. It's a great time, though. Yes. Yeah. You yes. can do that for a few days before you start collapsing. Yep. <laughs> um, so it's good. It only happens once a it's year. It's good. At, yes, that's what I've always thought about some of these these really intense festivals. Is yeah. You you never want them to end, but if you if it were to go year round, you would be dead because yes. <laughs> you, nobody can survive that for more than a couple of days. Um, okay, just a quick reminder in case you were not here at the beginning of the session. Um, I'm saying it twice tonight because I forgot to say it the last couple of weeks. The Irish Arts Center's classes start this coming week. Um, so this is their next eight week semester. It's all online um, and on Zoom and the classes are recorded. So if you, if you have to miss a few or you're Zoomed out for a week or two or whatever, it's, it's totally fine. You can get the recording. Um, you can find the link at irishartscenter.org. I'll put that back in the comments again. Um, and I teach on Tuesdays and James Cleveland teaches on Mondays. If you're a fiddle player, um, there's six levels of fiddle to choose from, which is great. And then the other thing that's coming up very soon, actually, I think, is it next weekend? Yes, it is. Yeah, is um, this uh, a festival called Fiddle Hell. Usually it's in real life, but this is actually the second time it's been held um, online. It's very impressive. 200, 200 workshops, 35 concerts, 35 jams. And it doesn't say here, but I believe there's about 100 instructors. Super cool. Um, of which I am one, and I suspect Mari is. Mari, you should let us know. Yeah. Um, and uh, Katie McNally, who was on last week, and Neil, they're both instructors. It's it's kind of a who's who of amazing people, not just Irish, tons of different genres, and also not just fiddle. Right. There's there's lots of instruments. You don't have to watch all 200 workshops <laughs> in the weekend because you get access for three months, I believe. Yes, which concept. is probably what it will take to get through probably, all 200 yeah. workshops. Um, but check that out and sign up. I know that they are um, they're almost to where they need to be in order to break even with their costs and. Uh, with us being in the same boat a lot of the time, I want to really help them out. If you have friends who um, you think might be interested, please spread the word about Fiddle Hell. It's, it should be an amazing, amazing thing, and we want to yeah. help them to, to succeed at what they're doing as well. So that we can hopefully go in person next year. Yes. <laughs> it's in Massachusetts, so it's not that far away. We would have no excuse not to. We have no, I, have, I don't know how we haven't been already. Yeah. Um, okay, we have another guest t tonight. Um, this guest is always at the session in the chat, but I don't... Has he done a, a solo set before? I don't I believe like so. He did, did actually. Did he do one? Um, it was on her... He, it was um, footage from his roof, and there were beautiful flowers. Oh. You remember that? A long time ago. Yeah. Anyways, this is this this one he's on screen. It, um, it's Bob Beamers. Uh, Bob has a collection of concertinas ranging from small to large, and I think we have shown a picture of his, his collection. Yes. Um, he sent me a bunch of clips to choose from, and I chose this one because he is playing um, one of my two favorites. My two favorites are the smallest one and the largest one, of as course. usual. Yes. Um, and in this one, he's playing the smallest one, which is very tiny. And uh, he's playing the, the air, the Kulin, which hopefully some of you know it's nice and slow, so you can, um, you can join in with him. So here we go.
Oh, wow. I love, love it. that. Beautiful. Yes, and um, the, the big concertina was on the piano. I, I um, hope everybody saw it. Actually, the whole family, the whole I think, family. was there, yeah. um, including the frog mascot, who, I, who we haven't met yet. Um, what was the name of the frog mascot? I, I missed it here. Oh, frog, um, Okay, Frogatuck. 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 That's okay, good. Great. Um, and I was also wondering what, what drink he's having. Some sort of delicious looking beer. Yeah, a fancy one. Yeah. It looks like a fancy beer glass yeah. there. Um, it also reminded us um, at the concert that we did for Villanova, the Friel sisters did the Kulin, but as a as a fast song, a, yeah, a fast tune, fast which tune. I've never heard before. Yeah. What did they say? That was a Donegal version or something? I think that so, it? yeah. Yeah, it's really, really cool. Uh, so that's the that's kind of the normal way to play it. Um, in the key of E flat, I forgot it was an E flat, so I don't oh, know yeah. how many people wanted to play along there, but um, it's really nice to listen to. Um, let's see. Okay, so we have one more set from uh, Francis and Mari, and then we have one more community collaboration um, and a set from us. That's our plan so yeah. far. Um, I will just mention um, who is up next week. Um, it is the Mario's Dream Team. We haven't had them in a long time. Uh, John Redmond and Matt Stapleton will be back, and the theme that they have selected is favorite jokes. And Matt yeah. and John always prepare some good yes, stuff for so the session. I hope you do as well. I suspect that this crew that we have is not lacking for jokes. No, certainly not lacking in puns. No, and I would say puns are kind of joke-like. Yeah, I think that's that would be it's, acceptable. It's a very clever, uh, clever bunch of you out there. So yes. um, come prepared with your favorite jokes. Um, we're not saying that there can't be any dirty jokes, but let's just keep it, well, classy dirty is fine. How about that? Yeah. Classy dirty jokes. Um, we don't want to get our stream taken down. No, let's just say that. we don't want to get our stream taken down. Yeah. That's right. Um, and uh, I forgot who the guests are next week. Oh, Jerry O'Connor is going to do a set. Yeah. And something or somebody else I've completely forgotten. Well, we'll put it up on the, on the website. It's always up on the website, Facebook and instagram all yes. that sort of stuff well that stuff's not quite up yet but we'll, it will be it will be very shortly <laughs> as soon as we get down with the alaska yeah. Fest. um okay so one more set from uh, francis and mari one of my personal favorite moments of any rager jam session is when we instrumentalists can play a set in such a way that it causes that step dancer you know the one that's been lurking over there in the far corner um causes that step dancer to stop lurking come forward into our jam circle and throw down. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. So uh, guys, I don't know about you. I have always found that I have the greatest success drawing that dancer out when I play tunes that have a uh, slightly Scottish bent to them. So we're gonna do a set just like that. Um, we're gonna do the Union Street session in D by Paul Cranford. We'll do Brenda Stubberts in A minor by Jerry Holland. What a and uh, we'll end up in the high road to Linton in A. All right, you ready? <laughs>
met Brian Markison. Yeah. Um, I was just chatting to Brian Markison because he is on the Alaska Folk Fest. Yeah, yes. But I couldn't right. remember what night, if it was tonight Brian or... Brian has a great set on the Alaska Folk Fest. Do you remember what night it's on? Uh, was it no. Saturday? Saturday, I think, yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, excellent. Every time I hear Brian Markson's woo, I think it's TJ's woo. And I especially thought it because TJ just popped into the comments there. Hi, TJ. How Hi, are you TJ. doing? I hope you're not working too hard. I think TJ works too hard. We could do a TJ woo. Oh, yeah, let's do one. Woo! That's excellent. I, I love the the ramp up at the mm -hmm. beginning yeah, of that. It nice. sounds like a motor or it something does, like that. Yeah. Um, okay, we have one more of these cool community uh, collaboration videos that I mentioned uh, came into us all, all at once in the last couple of weeks. Um, this one was sent in by Don Clark. It's a song, and he explains at the beginning um, a little bit about the video. But um, it is, um, he, he, he talks about how pubs are very important to us Irish musicians, which we have been talking about this whole year yes. as well. Um, that is where we usually play our music, and of course it's, um, it's in our interest to help support um, the pubs as well um, so that we have a place to play um, once things are going. So I'll let him explain. Uh, enjoy the song. Hello, I'm Don Clark, coming to you from Oakland, California. Lovers of Celtic music are badly missing the pubs and bars that had to close because of the pandemic. But people are trying to help. Here in the Bay Area, there are crowdfunding efforts for two bars that have sustained the tradition for more than 40 years the Plow and Stars in San Francisco, and the Starry Plow in Berkeley. I wrote the following song as part of that fundraising effort, but I hope it makes the broader point of just how important all these pubs are to people wherever they live. Just as Caitlin and Chris have helped Mary O's, we need to do more to keep these businesses alive. Michelle Delatra joins me on concertina and vocals. I hope you enjoy it. It's foggy tonight, there's a nip in the air To live by the bay, that's a price we can bear I'm headed off somewhere that makes me feel young Cause there's tunes to be played and songs to be sung It's a room where we always feel welcome A room where there's no worried brow a room for the folks who love music I'll meet you all down at the plow There's fiddles tonight And a young lad on box There's two girls with flutes Wearing matching red socks There's often a banjo One of two types At least one guitar And the sweet sound of pipes it's a room where we always feel welcome A room where there's no worry brow A room for the folks who love music I'll meet you all down at the plow Sometimes it's crowded, it's hard to sit down But someone shifts over with never a frown Players are local, but hail from all parts. The music of Ireland is deep in their hearts. It's a room where we always feel welcome. A room where there's no worried brow. A room for the folks who love music. I'll meet you all down at the plow. The evenings with dancers are often the best A four-handed reel circling eastward and west One hand together and one at your side Sidestep for seven, you matching her stride It's a room where we always feel welcome A room where there's no worried brow a room for the folks who love music I'll meet you all down at the plow The bar has been closed for more than a year The staff was hurt badly and there was no beer We can't let it die, whatever the cost Cause something so precious must never be lost 
It's a room where we always feel welcome A room where there's no worried brow A room for the folks who love music I'll meet you all down at the plow Yes, it's a room where we always feel welcome A room where there's no worried brow A room for the folks who love music I'll meet you all down at the plow Yes, I'll meet you all down at the plow Beautiful Great song. song. Yeah. Almost had me in, in tears there. That's, um, uh, yeah, it's been a year without a year without sessions. I guess, you know, there's a few sessions that are starting back up here in Manhattan now. We just yep. heard about um, the dead rabbit. Um, was this the first week? I'm not sure if it's the first week, but yeah. it's definitely going it's Sunday back. nights. Yeah. But like earlier time, I think. Right. And um, 11th, 11th Street, is Street on. And I got a message from uh, Niall saying that the, um, hey, Patty, Patty, Patty is Riley's on, yeah. is back earlier, which Early, is good. Yeah. That was a brutally late session. It um, used to be that you would go to Mary O's on Thursday, which starts at 8. Yeah. And then swing up to Patty Riley's, which started at, what, 11? 10.30. 10.30? Or later, yeah. the, depending on when things got going. And that made for a good night. <laughs> it made for a long night. Yes. And a, a long, good night. Yes. Um, so I was just trying to look up on, on the internet if there were any links that I could put um, for those crowdfunding efforts that... Um, that Don mentioned. I didn't actually find any right away, but I, I did put the, the link for the Plow and the Stars in the chat there if you want to check it out. It looks like they have some t-shirts and other things there. Well, you went to the Plow and the Stars once. Yes, we did, a couple years ago. And it was a strange experience, actually. Yes. It's an, it was an experience that I haven't had in many years, probably a decade or more. We went to the session. Um, I don't know if we were intending to play necessarily. I think we were just hanging oh. out. Um, well, one Callum Pasqua walked in just randomly. Right. Callum is from New York, as as we are, and Callum just walked in and was like, "Hey guys, yeah. <laughs> that was interesting." Yeah. Um, we did not know a single tune that was played while we were there. No, nope. that hasn't happened to me probably since I was a teenager, and I don't really know if that was a special night. Yeah, or... could have, we would we would not know, I guess. It was it was a weird feeling. Yeah. It reminded me how it's actually kind of scary when you <laughs> go yes. to a session and you just you don't know tune after tune after tune. Yeah. It doesn't it's, feel good. No, it doesn't feel good. I mean, it, I guess like you could look at it as, oh, I need to learn these tunes. Yeah. And, and that's yeah. exciting. But yeah. But anyway, the music Super was cool. great. Super yeah. cool. Awesome. Awesome pub. Musicians were great. The vibe yeah. was great. It was excellent. Yeah. Hopefully we can go back. Um, okay. We're going to play one more set of tunes with you here. Did I get all my stuff that I was supposed to stay? I think so. Yeah. Okay. So um, I haven't been mentioning the contribution link too much tonight. Um, I know everybody... Uh, including me, gets annoyed by me doing that. But um, that is how we continue to keep this this session going. So if you are able to throw a few bucks into the into the virtual box, which is over there, right here. Um, that helps us. Uh, we, of course, pay all of our leaders um, a normal uh, New York session wage um, for their for their time and efforts. Yes. And uh, for now, we're going to keep going. There might be some changes to the schedule coming up because of Chris and my filming schedule with our Broadway show. But um, it's uh, all of that is still up in the air. So yes, we're going to keep going somehow. for now. And um, next week, we will be back for sure with um, John Redmond and Matt Stapleton. Okay, mm -hmm. tunes. Um, so I, I wanted to select a bunch of tunes that Mari already had selected. Yep. Which is something that happens when you have a wild night out of the Kaylee. Somebody else steals all your best tunes, and that's totally fine, Mari. I'm glad that we have the same favorite best yeah. tunes. I wanted to do um, da 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 dum ba da 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 da, yeah. uh, and I was thinking, oh, that'd be a great one, and, and she got that one. It's good. It's good. Um, so the ones I've selected are Father Kelly's uh, classic, classic, classic Mario's tune, Drowsy Maggie um, in E minor, and then Humors of Tola to end off with in D major. So hopefully you can play along. We'll go medium fast. Medium fast. Medium. Medium. Medium, medium fast. Let's do let's do that. Double okay. medium. Double medium. <laughs> okay. Starting off in G.
Tiny bit. Tiny bit. Tiny bit. But that was really fun. That humor is a total, it never, it never ends. You just want to so go around too, like yeah. 10 times. <laughs> it's great. Um, cool. Okay. So I think that's, I think that's all we've got for tonight. That's everything. Um, thanks as always for stopping by the virtual pub. Um, Check out the Alaska Folk Fest. Yes. It's starting. Starting in. About an hour. Just, about an hour. Yeah. Just under an hour. And um, it will go until about 2 a.m. Eastern <laughs> time. Um, but it will be available afterwards as well. And um, what else? Contribute if you can to the Please do. Box. Yeah, helps us to pay all of our leaders. Yes, and uh, we will be back with you next week. Do mm -hmm. you want to do the, the thank yous? Yes, thank you, uh, Francis and Mari, for your I think the first appearance together on the session, right? First appearance together. Mari has led Mari's this been on a session. few times, yeah. Yes, but Francis uh, has only been on as a guest, I believe. Yeah. I think. Oh, um, wait. Was I she? think first appearance on the session. Oh, yeah. Because she was on the concert. She was on the concert a couple of times. Yes, yeah. well, it's really glad, uh, great, great, great to have you, you Francis. And you. Um, I don't think that Francis and I have met in person, if I'm rec recalling correctly, but I hope that we can. Yeah. Um, and it'll be great to play tunes with all, all these folks yes. once we someday once we can uh, go back out in the world, which hopefully is soon. Um, Things are looking up a little bit. Vaccines sure, are, yeah. are on the rise, although yes. I was just trying to find an appointment and... Yeah. Nothing is available. Yeah, <laughs> but anyways, I think things are getting better. And um, uh, now I'm rambling, so that means it's time to stop. So uh, we will see you back here, same time, same place, next week. And um, have a lovely week out in the warm weather. Sounds All good. All right. Good night. Bye.